Hey everybody, welcome back to the flight deck. Today we're doing another cargo run in the DC-6. We are sitting here fully loaded. We are out at the Isle of Man where we left off last time. And today's load is taking us across England, across the channel, and to Brussels in Belgium. So let's hop on board and we can start getting the aircraft ready to go. All right. So we're on board here. See the back door is still open and we are pretty much ready to go. So we can remove the wheel chocks, parking brakes are set. We can get the uh, stairs coming up. We'll get the doors closing in the back as well. Come on, doors. Are you closing? Oh, there we go. We'll still green it, stay green until they're closed. We'll get the cockpit door closed. There we go. And that is now closed as well. Doors are coming down. Ground power unit is connected. So we'll get the Fred and Roger working on getting the aircraft set up and we can talk about our route a little bit. All right, so our route is through a number of VORs and I will uh, bring it up on the screen right now. There we go. So we're leaving the Isle of Man. We're going to track the VORs out here to Northern England. We'll come down to Central England, diagonally down to the channel. We'll make the cross over to the, to the coast. And then we head southeastwards down towards, uh, oops, down towards Brussels itself. So these are all VOR points that we will be flying to. And there's a way we're going to do them. And we'll uh, discuss that uh, once we start setting it up. But uh, it's a bit of a dogleg route, not direct at all, because again, we are following the VORs. Flight level today is 13,000 feet as well. So that should make for an interesting flight. I'll get rid of that. Adjust it. Throttles. And just bringing up my diagram for taxi for when we're ready to go. Propellers. Forward and three. So we get Roger's seat down. Before start checks complete. And we're all Before set. Engines. So our fuel load today is, uh, you can see, is 9,352 pounds of fuel. And our cargo is 18,506 pounds, which gives us a gross weight of 80,425. So we're still under the cut for our uh, dry wet takeoff so this will be a dry takeoff and if we go up here to the chart at 80,000 pounds our v1 since we're down at sea level will be uh, 83 knots and our rotation speed is going to be 101 and of course we'll do the regular low uh, slow climb out as we head out and build up some speed Okay, so we are ready to start engines. So if we take a look, quick look outside, everything is done. We're all clear and locked up. And the doors are set and all the chocks are removed. So we're going to we're going to be coming out of here and we're going to basically do a hard right turn as we exit out. We'll pick up this taxi line. And then we're going to head down here and head all the way down because we're taking off from that end of the runway. So that's going to be a route out of the airfield once we get going. So it is time to uh, get ourselves up and running. I'll move this out of the way. It's just easier. Uh, so we have uh, mixture three in auto rich. We have magnetos in both. We have the engine selector to number three. Fuel pumps are set. Uh, number three mass main fuel pump is low and we are good to go so we're gonna crank engine number three 
and hopefully we get a good start. Sounding good. Manifold pressure is up. RPM pressure or RPMs are just below a thousand RPM, slowly starting to rise. Here the cutoffs starting to click in. We have uh, fuel flow on number three. We have fuel pressure on number three. And we have a good start. So we'll come down to engine four. Two clicks on the mixture puts it in auto rich. Magnetos to both. Engine selector to number four. Booster pump to low. And selector's already set. So starting engine number four. Three, six, five, twelve. Here goes engine number four. So that is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the plane battery now. So we're no longer running on the ground power. And we're going to come over and tell them to remove the ground power unit. And we're going to carry on. And uh, engine number two. It's mixture is auto rich. Magnetos are on both engine selectors. Number two, main uh, tank, our main fuel booster pump low. Selector, so I said, is set. Cranking engine number two. Come on, engine number two. There we go. So engine number two is running. Starters are off. We're waiting for the last two switches to come off. Of course, we check the panels. We can see we've got high RPMs there. I'm gonna knock these engines down to a better, better idle position. That's better. Alright, one engine to go. So mixtures up to, oops, sorry, yeah, uh, Fred. Mixtures up to auto rich. Magnetos to both. Engine selector to engine one. Main fuel booster pump to low and cranking. start on engine number one wait for the switches to click off there we go so we have all four engines now up and running looking good we can look out see them going everything is great so temperatures are coming up pressures are coming up Engines are nicely idling. It's 
fantastic. So, our current weather here in the Isle of Man is winds are 250 at 6 knots, ceiling visibility are okay, temperature is 19 degrees, QH is 1014, and no significant weather is expected. So we're going to tune you to 1014. Airport elevation, just to confirm, is 52 feet, so 10, 20, or 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So should be probably just a little bit below that, but there, there we go. So 1014, you can just make up the dot there. So that's all nicely lining up now. And we can do the after start checklist. Start selected bus bumps. Off and off. Battery switch. Plant entry. Generators and So with the VORs you can do navigation uh, quite easily with them, but off. there's something you have to remember. When the airplane is on the radio, it doesn't know which way uh, it's going, whether it's flying to the VOR on the radio or, or away from the VOR on the radio. You have to tell it. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to come up here to the radio stack and we're going to start putting in our frequency. So the first VOR we're going to want is the Isle of Man VOR. So we're going to dial that in here. So that's 112.2. So we'll dial that over to 112.2 and we're going to tune that in. The second one we're going to want is the POL VOR, which is 96 miles away. That's 1121. So we'll put that to 1121 and our standby. And at the moment, the way things are sitting in Brussels, although we're on a two hour flight here. Winds are two three zero at two, so we're gonna land on runway two five right. Uh, yeah, two five right, which means we are gonna want uh, the ILS Zulu for runway two five right, and the frequency on that is one zero eight point nine. So we're going to put that in our nav two, just so we, as a uh, reference, and we've got it handy uh, for when we're going to need it. So 108.9 will be in, and when we get closer, we'll be able to dial that in and just get our range from it. But it's also a reminder that that is our ILS frequency. And, okay, so there's a, another VOR we're going to need for the approach here, uh, BUN, and it's 110.6, and it'll be the 107 radio. So we've got our first frequency in, 112.2. Now we're not going to be flying to that VOR. We want to fly away from it. So normally if we were heading here, we would fly the frequency, in this case the 103 degree radial, and we'd be flying to the VOR. So we would put the 103 on top, and the aircraft would know, okay, I'm flying to. In this case, we're going to put the 103 on the bottom. And that's going to tell this that we are flying away. So when we do engage the gyro pilot, the aircraft is not going to want to turn around and head back to the VOR. It knows, okay, we're on the 103 VOR, but we're not flying to it. We want to fly away from it. So we're going to dial in that 103 down here on the bottom. And you can see there's a 2. And then there's the, the, the arrow will go the other way for away. So if I, if I turn it around... You can see it switch over, right? Because we're now 
the, we're now fa uh, facing away from where it is, so it's showing that. So we're going to put the 103 down here on the bottom. Uh, so that's that's your uh, 60, 90, 100, and we're going to just click a little bit over to about there, 103. And that's going to take us out. And then we're going to come over here. We have in one, it's 4.7 miles away currently is the distance to the VOR. So that, uh, hope that didn't do anything out there. And that's the hazards of clicking things as you move around the cockpit. Okay, everything is going good. We are pretty much ready for a taxi. So let's get the before takeoff checklist done. First stops. First stops on low. And we're going to wheel, wheel around. And get ourselves and ready to taxi up. So parking brake is off. off and, cold. and we're going to come up a little bit on the throttles. Down, Pressure quantity checked. Okay. And we're going to push Press the airplane 20. around. There we go. Flaps set 20. Windows of turbine. Closed and on. Controls. Last lock released, free. Pitoator. On. Mixture and cow flaps. Bridge unlocked, set. Transponder. On. Landing lights. Alright, so the before takeoff checks are done. Taxi down. And you don't want to get the engines up into that harmonic range. And you don't want to, barely any power. And she'll, on the flat, she'll taxi fine. Got my position kind of heads up here just because you know it's a little low. And we'll just look out, everything is looking good. And we're gonna taxi down to the end. Your full cargo load there. Nice little airport here, right on the edge of the edge of the water. I think there's a slight hill here that we're trying to get up. Six thousand foot runway, so not a lot of room. So we're not going to roll any earlier than we have to. So we'll wait for the engines to come up to full power. in the manual you can look up your takeoff roll and figure that all out so the taxiway does go all the way to the end again if you haven't had a chance to get the airplane it's not that expensive for a PG, PGDM aircraft and it is a lot of fun to fly. Keeps you busy, keeps you thinking. All right, 
get back in we're starting to roll so we'll come back on the throttles idle everything see the wind sock slight wind it's not too bad here Of course, Brussels was updated in the sim, so it'll be nice to fly in there, see what it looks like. All right, 13,000 feet is our altitude. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can uh, dial in 13,000 for the pressure setting. We'll have to make a Slight adjustment, it's 10, 11, 12, 13,000. Not anticipating needing any anti ice, and but we'll see. cleared out to the runway. So everything is looking good. going here you know no use using all four engines when uh, we only need two to help edge us around the corner here no point in overpowering much of the runway as we can. Interesting uh, stuff out there in the water. There we go. Let's see we got the hill in front of us there. Now you can see the VOR is pointing, or the, this needle is pointing right to that VOR that we just dialed in, but we're not going to fly to it, we're going to fly away from it once we get going. So we're going to be taking off, we're on the south coast of the Isle of Man, so we're going to take off and then we're going to make a left turn and we'll swing around and then we'll pick up that VOR for the left turn and we should be good so without further ado dry takeoff 30 inches stabilize 30 inches stabilize set the brakes we're going to hold until we have full power There's the harmonic area. You can see everything start shaking for a second. 30 inches, stabilized. Cal flaps. Cal flaps. Cal flaps set. Full power, please. Going full power. Power is coming up. Brakes released. All right. Keep her on the center line. Airspeed's alive.
80 knots. And rotate. Pitch for about 120. As we climb out. Start nosing down slightly. Try to get her up to about a hundred and thirty five. Flaps up. Flaps going up. Flaps are coming up, so she's going to want to nose down. So we're just controlling that. It's 1,000 feet. We're going to begin our turn. We'll go 10 degree turn. Meter power, engines are coming back. Start our trim for 165. And when he sets climb power, we're going to uh, nose down a little bit. So we're going to keep that speed set. We're going to keep in that climb bank. Not too bad, we're holding that 165. We're making our turn. I'll just keep this 10 degree bank, or about 15 degree bank now as we come around. There's 3,000 feet. See the needles now behind us. And we're going to carry this in. So we're on 103, we're going to carry it into about a 45, 50 degrees on the turn and then we will start to uh, close in on the radio. There's the speed coming up a little bit. All right, so we'll bring her in at about 60 degrees. So, 55 degrees. We're going to come over to the auto gyro now. So we're going to turn it on. Engage the mechanical connect. That will hold us. And you can see our nose coming down. So we're going to dip the nose down a little bit. Bring that speed back to 165, which is our climb speed in this aircraft. We can see the arrow coming in. So we're going to go into a localizer mode. Pick up the localizer. Let me just see what's going on here. Let's see if I got this wrong. It's been a long time since I've done this. I'm trying to get the speed up a little bit. Alright. So you are going to go two, aren't you?
All right, so if I come in here, yeah, you are. So if I turn you around, you go 103. There, now it's on the from. It's odd. So the speed's getting better. Come up slightly on that. One notch. Anyway, that's, hmm, that's the way you want it. You want the, uh, arrow at the bottom because it's pointing to where the VOR is which is behind you which is what you want so you're flying away from it if the arrow is on the top pointing up it means you're flying towards it to it you want from Let's see how it uh, wraps out here. here come the clouds See how it dials in. Well, that's right, it is doing what it's supposed to do. Just I'm sh sure. Because we're flying away on that VOR, it should have been. Okay, it doesn't matter. Thing to remember is your your from uh, flag. You can see it's pointing back, and then your to flag would be on the other side, pointing to. So we're fly We want to fly away from it. You want the from flag, and then you put it in the radio. Do another uh, notch down on the speed. We've got 4,000 feet to go on the climb. Something just clicked. It's coming up. And we're above the clouds. And not seeing any icing out there. So we're looking good. It's 10,000 feet. So we are 96 miles, so at around 45, 50 miles, we're going to switch over to the next VOR, and uh, we're going to want that flag to switch to the two, so we may have to dial this around, we'll see. But this is how we're going to get all the way to our destination, just tracking VORs. good. Beautiful airframe. Not too many clouds up here, so that won't be an issue. There's 11,000 feet. Uh, don't think we've got the... can't adjust that one. There's no differential yet. We're not high enough. Uh, we've set that for 13,000 feet. Should all be good. Just 
12,000. One more notch down. Their speed's slowly starting to come off. So we're 15 miles away now. And we're out over the, the sea here. Heading towards England. So there's 500 feet. So I'm going to roll forward a little bit. Let the speed start coming up. Slow the descent rate. Or the ascent rate. Make it a smoother catch when we uh, go to altitude hold. Two hundred feet to go. Another couple notches. Hundred feet to go. A couple more. And a few more. And there's thirteen thousand feet. So nice altitude capture, minimal bobbing around. Speed's gonna start increasing. See our, our fuel in our main tanks is looking good. We have nothing in the alternates today. Speed's coming up. That's pretty good, so let's run our cruise checklist. Set cruise power, please. Set cruise power. So power's gonna come back. The uh, pitch on the props is gonna coarsen up, take a bigger bite out of the air, keep us running. It's like going into an overdrive mode in your car. Higher gear ratio, engines don't have to work as hard. Cruise power is set. in cruise so I'm gonna navigate this beast and we will uh, meet up with you again when we are getting ready for our descent into Brussels see you then Welcome back to the flight deck. We're currently 13,000 feet, now it hasn't changed. We've just about crossed the English Channel. We are uh, coming up for 10 nautical miles from the Koski VOR, which is on the Belgian border, or Belgian coast of the North Sea slash English Channel. And that is where we're gonna uh, start our descent. It's about uh, 90 miles or so out from where we gotta be down at 2,000 feet. So that's where we're gonna commence it. That's the standard calculation, five miles for every thousand feet. We're going down 11,000 feet. Um, so that is uh, 60 miles plus, you know, 25 to 30 to allow for slowdown. So that's what we've got set. So just after we pass the VOR, we are gonna head downwards. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come down. We're gonna go into gyro mode. We're gonna come up to our panel the next VOR is set, that is the AFI VFR on 114.9. So we're going to click that in, 114.9. The next one we're going to want after that is the BUN VOR on 110.6. That is the entry point into the arrival uh, for the ILS. So 110.6 there, and we have the ILS 108.9 over on nav 2. So if we come down to here, we're going to want to tune in our, 
OBS to 91 degrees. That is the heading we're going to want coming off the VOR. That's going to be right about there. And you can see this is now pointing off in the direction of that VOR, and we're almost there. So we're 58.8 miles away from the next VOR. And then we make another left turn and we head up towards the Bund VOR, which is our intercept for the ILS. As soon as we see that start moving, we'll go over to localizer. And that'll uh, take us off in that direction. We're almost there. Yeah, we can see it's starting to move. So we'll click over to localizer. And we're going to pick up on that and we'll fly that in. Uh, we should be flying that in. Should have turned by now. Uh, we are picking it up. We got the right heading. No. I want 100. There we go. I was reading the wrong one. So there we go. We're turning in now. So now we're going to start our descent. So once we level off, we come around and we just check anti-ice is currently off. Although we are going to be going through some clouds. Alright, so we're going to uh, fly over and pick up that VOR now. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down, we will disconnect our altitude hold. And we're going to start down at a thousand feet per minute. Our speed is going to increase, that's fine. When we pass through 10,000 feet, we will do our descent checklist, and that will bring the power back a little bit. That will prevent us from getting too fast. There we go, 1,000 feet. See the speed coming up as we do this. I've also tuned in, you can see 402 tuned in on the ADF, which will indicate direction and on these indicators. Uh, that is a beacon on the approach path, so it's just as a reference point to make sure we're properly lined up as we go. Looks like we're going to be getting close to the clouds, so we'll turn on the anti-ice again until we come out below. Temperature is 5 or 6 degrees below freezing, as you can see right here. So we're going to keep that going for a little bit. The weather currently in Brussels are light winds from the west, a few clouds at 1300, 16 degrees, and 1015 for the barometer, which I've got dialed in. It's 11,500. See our cabin pressure is slowly decreasing. As we come back down into higher pressure air. Again, just monitoring that descent rate and adding and subtracting with the wheel as we come down through. And we're into the clouds now. Icing hasn't been an issue so far, though we've been in and out of the tops a little bit. It's 
been a relatively uneventful flight. Fuel's doing good in all four main tanks. Just keeping an eye on that descent rate. There we are. Flight engineer clicking things. That wasn't me that time. Not that I'm aware of. I think he's doing the carb heat. So there's uh, 10,000 feet. Let's do our descent checklist. 26 inches, please. 26 inches. That will slow us down sl slightly as the power comes back. So we're 32 miles out from the next VOR. And we're coming down through 9,000 feet. Leave the anti-ice on. We're coming back into the clouds a little bit. So you can hear him playing a little bit with the props there, keeping that RPM set. Speed is slowly coming back. And it looks like we may get some low cloud. We have cloud down to 1300 feet, so we should be good. Our minimums on the approach on the ILS is 200 feet. I mean, we can only do a cat one, so 200 feet for us. So that's going to be 302 foot. Um, minimum. See very overcast over Europe here. 25.6 miles from the next VOR, which is just outside Brussels, although we're going to make a turn. That's the Affligan VOR. We're going to make a turn to the left, pass uh, north of Brussels, and then loop around for the ILS. So we're not yet picking up the ILS frequency. We're not picking up the v, the ADF yet, which is fine. We're still a uh, fair distance away. There's 7,000 feet. Some little villages coming in. If anyone's interested, this is... Uh, uh, my pronunciation's probably off, but Depint, Depinte. If you're looking for where we are, we're coming in from the kind of northwest of Brussels. And uh, we make the turn at the VOR, which is just outside the turn of uh, town of Affligem. I guess that's Flemish. Six thousand feet. We're going to go to uh, three thousand feet initially. So I'm going to uh, lower our descent rate slightly. We'll 
bring her back to 500 at the moment. Still fairly far out. That'll help bring our speed back a little bit as well. That's the town of Ghent. Up here. Two main highways, the E17 running up here and the E40 running this way down to Brussels. So 110.6 is the BUN and once we flick that over I'm going to dial in the uh, 10. 8.9 which is the ILS so that we're ready to switch for that one it's 5,000 feet Ground elevation out here is about 100 feet, roughly, so we'll be about uh, 3,000 feet above the ground. So we're 11 miles out. We're now picking up the ILS frequency. It's strong enough. The uh, second VOR needle is pointing towards the uh, where the airport is. Still nothing on the ADF, but still pretty far out for that one. It's 4,000 feet coming up. Bring that back to 500. Eight miles out. So we're going to go over to gyro pilot mode. And we'll switch the frequency here to 101.6. And then we're going to go to 108.9, which is the ILS frequency. We're going to want a heading of about 70 or so. See the needle sound pointing towards the other VOR. There's the uh, town of Alphagam coming up. Second VOR needle is pointing off towards the airport, which is just off to our left slightly. And the ADF needle is now kicked in. You can see it's now pointing off towards the ADF, which is part way down the glide path. Five hundred feet coming up. All right, so we're going to go back over to localizer. Let it make the turn and pick it up. Watch 
actually head up there at about zero six three. That's fine. There's three thousand feet, so we're gonna come back on our descent and lock in three thousand feet. That was a little rapid, didn't want to do that. You can see the low cloud that they're talking about. Alright, so we're now uh, starting to come in for the next beacon, which is 26 miles away. We'll do our in range checks. Cooling turbine. Normal. Fuel booster pumps. On low, fuel tank selectors, mains on, cross feed off, hydraulic bypass belt, down, no smoking signs, on, in range checks complete. So our next checks will be our before landing checks, which we will do once we pass the VOR and we start to uh, come around. Speed starting to come back. And once we get down to 175, we can start putting down the flats. 23 miles to go. Airport is off in that direction. You can see the arrows pointing off to the beacon and the ILS broadcaster. Brussels is town of Brussels is basically over here. Looks like we're gonna be dodging a little bit of cloud as we come in. So we're down about 185 on the nottage. Slight adjustments to keep us on track. If we look at the air temperature, we're uh, about 10 degrees, so I'm gonna come up here and turn off the windshield heating. Once we hit the VOR, we're going to make a right-hand turn, and we're going to turn out to 214 degrees, and that should bring us on a good intercept. Uh, I'm going to turn the internal lights on. We'll go white lights, just get a little bit of illumination since we're in and out of clouds. Fifteen miles to go. Speed is about one eighty one. dark in front of us. The airport's back over here. If 
Alright, there it is there. You can see the short north-south type of runway right there. And we're going to be, uh, we're landing on this one here. That is 25 right. And then we'll be parking over here, which is the cargo area. Ten miles to go. So I'm going to go back over to gyro pilot mode. As soon as we hit the thing, we'll switch over to the ILS and then we will start our turn into heading a 214, which will give us the correct intercept course for the beacon, or for the localizer. We're also going to descend to 2,000 feet. Speed's about 180. Uh, put in the first notch of flaps. It's 10 degrees, it should get us to start slowing. Doesn't seem to want to do those last five knots sometimes. There's 275, four miles out, flaps 15, our 175 and now 170, we'll go flaps 20. And we'll hold her there, speed comes back, three miles out. Gyro pilot mode. So we're going to put in a slight nose down. Get us working down towards that 2,000 feet now. Take her to about 500 feet per minute. So we're going to start that turn. And I'm going to switch over to the localizer. Let's kick it over a little bit more. We're going to be wanting 214 on the heading. as we come around. Yeah, it's going to be a slow descent. Down to 2,000. Here we want about a 214. For the intercept. There we 
go over there. Put the plane down. 2,000 feet. Lock that in, and we can do our before landing checklist. Flaps 20, setting flaps 20. We're watching for movement on the localizer. Flaps set. Mistress wrench, please. Auto wrench. Mistress set. Gear up and down, please. Gear up and down. There's the gear coming down. Increase the drag as well. Green lights just came on. Props. Props are going to 2500. Thirteen miles out. You can see glide slope and nav are both active, so we're waiting for movement. We'll go into localizer mode or approach mode, and then once we get glide slope movement, we can disconnect the altitude hold so that it will we'll be able to do its thing there. There we have localizer movement. So into approach mode. 12 miles out, still in the clouds. I'm going to turn the anti ice off. We're low enough that it's not going to be a concern. And it's warm enough. That if anything, it's just going to be rain. Definitely see the low cloud. So we're coming on to the glide slope. I do have control of the props right now, though I haven't touched them. We're at 130, which is a good approach speed. Happy with that. 2,000 feet above the ground. We're nicely trimmed. Six miles out, we should uh, start down on the glide slope. Ten miles, four miles to go, watching for the glide slope needle to start moving. And then we'll disconnect the altitude hold as mentioned. And then we're gonna watch for watch our air speed. It's bouncing around a little bit. If we do a quick look up here at eight thousand so one thirty one approach speeds so we're a little fast and we should be at uh, one hundred when we uh, come over the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back slightly on the power and bring it down to about uh, 90 BMEP. There we go. Runway's in sight. See the uh, glide slope is moving. So I'm going to disconnect the altitude hold. If you don't do that, you're not going down. It's going to hold it there. So I am going to trim back slightly. Just to keep the altitude. Until the glide slope intercepts. 
Speed is coming back. We're back down to 130. Flaps 30. There's nose down. Flaps 40. We should be descending around 700 or so, 700 to 750 feet per minute. Airspeed is 130, which is what we want. Flaps 40, we'll go to flaps 50. There's the outer marker. And you should see that uh, yellow needle spin around. That's the, the beacon we'd set up. So there she goes. We're just past the outer marker. Airspeed. See two whites, two reds. We're looking good. It's a thousand feet. All right, so all flat is full. Slightly low. Autopilot disconnected. I have control. 500 feet. Bring the power back. Speed's coming down. 120. See your marker. Coming back. One fifteen. One ten. A little, little bit of a float. One oh five. on those flaps 50. Come on, get her down. Oh yeah, we went long. Throttles to idle, reversers on. Reversers full. I'm looking around the cockpit. <laughs> All right, it's 40 knots. The engine's right back. We're gonna exit. Oh, welcome to Brussels. We landed long, which is not really what you want. Should have come to probably flat 50 at about a thousand feet would have been better. Make sure all our engines are. Oh, she's still. Oh, that's why. Right. There we go. Yeah, I know what happened there. Accidentally, uh, she went backwards and dropped her tail, but it's fine. We'll ignore that. After landing checklist, sir. We're just going to head over here to one of the bays and we'll shut her down. I always got to remember that switch has to go back down. After landing chase complete. 
after feathering the prop or going into reverse on the props. Our destination. So just bring her in. Almost there. So they're lined up. And I think that will do. So the parking brake is set. Engines are at idle. And we can do the shutdown. Parking brake is set. Well, it's overcast here in Brussels, but at least it's not raining. And there's the last engine going down, so wheel chocks will go in. Ground power unit will go in. I could start opening the doors. Oh, and there's the logbook. And oh, let's see what happened there. Uh, they went closed again. All right, out self. Wait for all that stuff to be done. And the stairs. There we go. The stairs are going down, so we can exit the airplane. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Good flight. We're over on the continent now. And uh, we'll see where our next cargo run takes us. Till then, bye for now.